welcome to episode 13 of Deeper Perspectives, the greatest podcast known to man. Um, let's see, numero uno on the agenda, we're going to talk about, or I'm going to ramble for a little bit about uh, eel bites, um, which in retrospect was fairly pointless, but stay tuned because in the second part of the podcast, um, i got a pretty good topic of conversation to address. So I got bit by an eel, which is actually not the first time it's happened, or even the second or third time. It's kind of a trend. Um, but here is a glimpse of the inner workings of the eel bite victim's mind. My camera just told me to change the battery pack, and I just smacked it on my knee a couple times. It seems to be working fine. Maybe that's what happened to me. I was malfunctioning and needed a reset. Maybe that eel was just a jerk. Once my buddy stabbed himself in the finger when we were diving. I kept trying to tell him he was okay. He was fine and he didn't go to the hospital. He can't use that finger anymore. That's the bad part about having dive buddies. They never really want to quit. Good part is, I know these guys would give me any of their fish, especially if I bled all over them. So it's been about two and a half hours since I got bit and I have lost track of the divers. It's not that I don't care. Okay, it is that I don't care. That just came up. But I don't think you caught anything. I wish I was Filipino. I would have eaten that eel. Yeah. Injury report. I got mauled by an eel. Christian got stung in the face. <laughs> and Mike's chest is tight. I don't feel <laughs> Alright, now that we both suffered through that, uh, I want to talk about the uh, subject um, that's been on my mind for the last few days. I was looking over some old Lua footage I had. I was trying to figure out, man, how did I not stone that Alua? Uh, I, I thought I was lined up on him, and when I went back and looked through the footage, uh, I came to the conclusion that if I had just hit him maybe three frames earlier, maybe a tenth of a second earlier, I think I would have got the stone shot. And then I realized there was a bit of a lag but between the time I pulled the trigger and the time the shaft left the gun. Um, as well as, of course, from the time the shaft leaves the gun until it hits the fish. Um, so, I don't really see this discussed too much. You know, everybody talks about bringing the fish in, scratching rocks, dusting sand, all that. But uh, let's talk a little bit more about what happens once you do bring the fish in, once you take the shot. You know, we already talked about the matrix. Um, it's some. Uh, after I looked at this footage, I've been talking to like all my spearfishing friends about it and the conversation kind of just keeps rolling and rolling. Um, so I'm just kind of going stream of conscious on this one because there's so many topics that it brings up and so many hundreds of gigabytes of footage on my computer. But I selected three clips and um, basically we'll just start by talking about that Alua I was talking about. So. Uh, let's roll it. Alright, there's that shot on the Lua I was talking about. Um, and you can see I hit him pretty good, but didn't stone him. Alright, you can see I'm lined up here for the intercept shot. Uh, I've got my gun stationary. This is the first frame of the sequence. This is right when you can hear the trigger mechanism pull. And you can see I'm lined up for the stone shot here, but it's already 0.1 seconds before the band really begins to move. Um, so again, I'm not tracking here. I just have the gun stationary and I needed to lead him a little bit more uh, to compensate for the amount of time because this is when you can hear it hit him already 0.2 seconds into it. And by then he's moved a little too far. And as we can see when we zoom in here, I hit him right in front of the gills, which is a good solid shot. That's gonna hold, but it's not gonna turn out the lights. That's really what you want. Um, again, I'm lined up for the stone shot, but by the time he gets there, he's turned. Tracking is really important, and leading 
is really important with whiptails because they always move. And when you make the shot, they usually don't try to dodge, they just speed up. Now you can see right here where Hatch is aiming. Uh, he's going for an intercept shot too. Now he's aiming right above that knob of coral, right at the red's head. And you can see by the time the shaft gets there, the shaft goes right where he aimed, right above that coral. But it results in a mid-body shot because the Uhu's already moved on. And that's usually going to result in a torn off fish. So you want to lead a little bit on the Uhu's. Um, and here's just one more because uh, red whiptails are such a good example of how to do this. You can see on this one I'm tracking. Uh, with the tracking, you don't have to lead quite as far. You still have to lead. But it's really important as well when you're using the tracking method to continue to track as you make your shot. Um, I think we'll see here in a second in slow-mo. Just This is also a pretty far shot. Um, and I should have led a little further than I did. You can see here that the shaft is pointed at the tip of the Uhu's nose. Should have, should have aimed a little further forward because by the time the shaft gets there, we actually get a belly shot. Um, and that's not going to hold a lot of times on Uhus. Alright, so I've been getting a lot of good feedback and comments and stuff, I think, on YouTube and here and there, but especially like to hear what anybody has to say, any experiences with this or anything related to it. I mean, I got enough thoughts and footage that we could probably uh, do a whole college semester seminar or whatever on on this subject and maybe we will um, just uh, hit me up on YouTube or Facebook or send an email uh, through the webpage thekindproductions.com and uh, we'll see what we got for episode 14 all right